Hi, and welcome. Today we're testing the alligator indicator in Python with a strategy claiming to be the best gator strategy with a profitable outcome. We will backtest this trading system and see if we can make it work systematically in Python. If you are interested in the coding part, you can download the Python code from the link in the description below. The indicator is simple. We have three moving averages with different length. Usually the values defined by the inventor of the indicator are 13, 8, and 5. But the difference for this indicator is that, that we will add an offset for each of these moving averages. These will be 8, 5, and 3. I don't see how this could make any sense because indicators are already lagging. So why would we add any more lag? But let's wait for the backtest before we judge this indicator. The strategy tests if the three moving averages are in a certain order. So if we have the fast above the medium, above the slow moving average, we consider an uptrend. In our code, we need this condition to be true for the last few candles. So we're not just testing for one single candle, which is the current candle, but also for the previous subsequent candles. Let's set a number of back candles that we can change in our code just as any other variable. For example, here we have a moving average curves order in the up direction for these subsequent candles. So we have an uptrend movement and we will wait for one candle to close below the medium moving average. That's the red curve in the middle because now we are in an uptrend and we are waiting for this trend to be broken in the down direction. This candle closes below the medium moving average. So in some sense, we consider it breaks the current usual trend and we assume that the price will continue moving downward from this point on. In the opposite direction, when we have a downtrend confirmed by the three moving averages, we will wait for a candle that closes above the middle moving average. So it breaks the trend and we assume that an uptrend will follow in the future. Now the issue is that at this point we have two choices to test the indicator. Either we check and count the occurrences manually and we estimate the result or we can backtest the indicator in a strategy using a simple trade management approach on historical data. We will use the following rules. The stop loss value will be set to X percent below the position opening price for a long position of course. And the take profit is set to the stop loss distance multiplied by the take profit stop loss coefficient variable. Now the good thing in Python is that we can optimize these parameters automatically to test the best possible outcome from this alligator indicator. We can also add more indicators to confirm the signal if needed. For our test today, we will be using a 15 minutes time frame and apply our backtest to around one year of data. Now we can get into the coding part, but just a reminder, you can download the whole Python code from the link in the description below and use it for your own experiments. This is our Jupyter Notebook file. I'm loading the data, read underscore CSV, Euro US dollar, candlesticks, 15 minutes time frame between 2023 and 2024. I'm cleaning the data, the GMT time column from the fractions of seconds, and we're casting it to a date time format using the correct format. And then we're cleaning the uh, candles where we didn't have any movement or any volume. And then we're setting the index to be the GMT time column. Now the way to define the alligator indicator is by defining these three moving averages. And uh, the first one is length 5, second one 8, and 13. And we're shifting these. This is how the uh, indicator works. We need to shift, add this lag of 3, 5, and 8 to our values. So these are the three moving averages that will define or plot the alligator indicator on our uh, charts. And then I'm adding one additional column that might be useful later on. It's called the moving average differences. It's simply the difference between SMA 1 and 3. So it's going to be positive in the positive direction if the fast moving average is above the slow moving average and it's going to be negative in the negative trend direction where the fast moving average is below the slow moving average. And we will need also maybe later on, we're going to add the exponential moving average as well, the length 200 to define the um, trend in general. Maybe we need to filter some of these trades. So the data frame now looks like this. We have our indicator, the index, we have open, high, low, close, the volume, the SMA 1, 2, and 3, the indicator, the difference, and the EMA, the exponential moving average. Now we're going to define a new function called check SMA conditions. It takes the current row index, 
the data frame and the number of back candles to consider in the test of the trend. So uh, we have the uh, slice, the first slice for the SMA1, the moving average one. It's equal to the current index minus the number of back candles until the current index excluded. So it's, let's say, the previous 10 or 5 or 15 candles discarding the current candle. And it's going to be the same slice for the three moving averages, only with different columns. And we're checking if all the high prices of these candles are below the EMA, or if, or the lowest prices of these candles are above the EMA. This is going to help us define the trend in general, if needed. Now, we don't have to use all these conditions at the same time, but these are just here. I kept them for you if you want to experiment on these. I'm going to explain the rest of the code here so you can use this function later on for your experiments. The first condition is called condition one, is equal to all SMA1 below SMA2, below SMA3. So this is the um, downward momentum, the uh, downtrend uh, momentum. Then this is going to be for SMA1, SMA2, and 3 in zip, SMA1 slice, SMA2 slice, SMA3 slice. So we're just taking these slices right here, and we're checking if for all the candles, this condition is true. So we have this order of moving averages. In which case we have condition one, so we could return one already, but we're going to add some conditions to filter some of the noise for the indicator. Second condition is the opposite, so we need the fast moving average to be above the uh, medium moving average and to be above the uh, slow moving average. Now I added a condition, condition one confirmed and condition two confirmed. In case you need to add some extra filtering using the 200 EMA, it's just showing you the way how to do it. So you can add some conditions inside of this function. Then there is a third condition actually that we might be considering for this video as well. It's that the difference between SMA1, SMA3 has to be above a certain threshold. I would say 10 to minus 6 at least. We don't want to take these cases where the two moving averages are very close to each other's. So we don't have enough volatility. We don't have a, a lot of a difference or a lot of momentum in the direction of the trend. We don't want to consider these cases. We need real clear trend where the moving averages are wide apart from each others. And at the end, we return the signal. So we need condition one, which is this one. So we are in a short downtrend, but at the same time, we have a certain width between the moving averages. And at the same time, we have condition two confirmed. So condition two is this one. We need all the low values of the subsequent candles above the exponential moving average, which means that the, um, we have a general uptrend using the EMA. But as a short term, we have a small downtrend, which means that we're waiting for this pattern where in a general uptrend, we have this small retracement downwards confirmed by condition one, and we need to have a break above the uh, middle moving average. So now we can run this cell and we have our SMA signal for now. Then for the total signal, we're going to use this SMA signal. So when it happens, I also kept some additional conditions for the body of the candle and the upper wick. Maybe you want to use the lower wick. So we're not going to use these now. These are not used for this code, but I kept them here for experimentation later on. So I'm going to command these for now. Just keep in mind that they are here in case they are needed. So if we have an SMA signal equal to two, so we have a short uptrend in a general downtrend. So it's a small retracement up in a general downtrend. And at the same time, we have a closing price below the middle SMA, the medium uh, pace SMA. In this case, we return one. We assume that the price is going to take the trend down again and continue downwards. In the opposite case, if the SMA is equal to one, the SMA signal result, and the row close is above the SMA two, then we consider that we're going to have an uptrend uh, to continue in the general uptrend, and we return two. In any other case, we return zero. And this is our total signal. I'm going to run this for now. So in this example, we took back candles equal to 10. So we're just computing all of these signals for the uh, 10 previous subsequent candles. But we can use more. Actually, we can use 20 or 15. It's the 15 minutes time frame, so we could use at least 15 of these. Anyway, for the for the signal, for the total signal, we have this. I'm going to test that we have signal equal to two. So we have 78 rows. 
signal equal to one is around 134 rows. These are the purple points. I'm plotting all the data we have now for a whole year, but it's not going to look very uh, clean. We can to take a small slice. So that's T plus 400, let's say. Um, we have one signal here. And notice that we have this 200 EMA here. So we are in a general downtrend. Then we have a downtrend as well, but then a small retracement, um, an uptrend, a small uptrend here, a retracement. And apparently there's a candle closing below the middle one, breaking down this small retracement. And this is how we know that the uh, price is going to continue down. It's not looking very bad, to be honest. This signal is looking very good. Let's check the second one. It's around 400. So we're going to add the slice a bit more. Let's go up to 450, see what happened. Also, the price continued down, and this is a great entry point, actually. These are a great entry points. I'm going to shrink it to start to from 200 because this way we can maybe see better. So we have this point, this one, and this one. This one here is not a good signal because notice the price started to go back up, joining the 200 EMA, and we're going to revert the general trend from a downward trend to an upward trend. So that's uh, confirmed by the 200 EMA um, distance from these candles. Okay, now let's apply the back test. So we're going to set the index. We're going to um, load the signal in a function that we have pre-computed. And we're going to optimize actually using backtesting.py. We're going to optimize two parameters, the take profit stop loss ratio and the percentage. The way it's going to work, the stop loss is going to be, uh, let's say, 2% below the price, below the current price. And the take profit is going to be the stop loss distance times this take profit stop loss ratio. So 1.5 here, the uh, stop loss distance. That's, this is our uh, take profit. That's our reward risk ratio. And uh, this percentage, I'm not sure we should be taking 2%. And this is why I included it inside of the uh, optimization. So we're going to try 1 per 1,000, 2 per 1,000, 3, 4, and 5. So we're not even reaching 1% because otherwise we would have stop loss distances that are far away from the entry positions. So this is how it should be for now. It makes a bit more sense. So we're going to run this optimization now and you can see that it's going to take a bit of time, a few seconds, less than a minute. And now we have the result. So in the best possible case, notice that these are the optimized parameters. We get 15% in returns. We didn't, we didn't account for commissions here because we're testing the indicator. We're not testing the whole strategy. I just want to know in the best possible scenarios, in the best possible case, and with optimized parameters, how much this alligator indicator can lead in profits and returns for a year of data. So the annual returns are around 13%. The sharp ratio is around one. That's not very impressive. Maximum drawdown minus 7%. That's good. I don't like large drawdowns and average drawdown is minus 0.7%. That's also good. We can plot, well, we have access to the trades in case you are interested. So profit loss of every trade, the entry price, the exit price, and so on. We can check the best set of parameters. So uh, after the optimization, so the take profit stop loss ratio is 1.7 and the percentage is four per 1000 are the best returns, the best possible return which is 15% here. So we have a cluster of positive values. It's not looking very impressive, to be honest. And this is a confirmation that the previous indicator in the previous videos that we have used using the Bollinger Band was very powerful because I remember the whole matrix looked very positive. So we had large clusters of positive returns and good returns, which is not the case in here for the alligator, for example. We can also plot the equity and the, uh, the trades, and we can see that we have a large drawdown period here. So it's like around, I would say, three months, four months of drawdown. Then we started climbing. The second half of a year was a bit better. So we started climbing. It's not much of a trade. So in total, we have around, I think, um, 70 trades or so. So it's around 57 
trades, the win rate is 47%. So this is in the best possible scenario. Remember that we run this for the optimization. So with the best set of parameters, we got these results. So that's not very impressive for the alligator unless we are using it the wrong way. There might be different ways of using the alligator. If you've used it in a good strategy, please do let us know in the comments. It takes two minutes. Leave me those in comments. We can discuss this and see if we can include it in one of the future videos. For me, it's the first time I'm using it. I'm testing it. I was just curious. It was also proposed by, by some of you in the comments. So this is why we're testing it today. Also, if you are having troubles plotting, you're having this error message. Someone left a comment and I hope they are watching now. Data contains too many candlesticks to plot, etc. You can just um, turn off the resampling. So resample equals false and it's going to work. Apparently it's a bug from backtesting package for the new updated version. Uh, sorry about this. I know someone left this in the comment section and I didn't leave the uh, correct answer. Now I found the solution. If you are watching, you have your solution for now. Okay. So as you can see, back to our indicator, it's not that impressive. I would say I really struggled to get any positive returns using this indicator, but maybe the way we're using it in this video is not the best. If you have any other propositions, please leave it in the comment section. Thank you for staying that long and until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.